Hey guys, so today I'm here to do a tag video and I'm super excited because I love getting tagged for tag videos. Like, it's just so much fun for me because all these fun tags have been going around. But anyways, that was a ramble. I was tagged in a two-in-one book tag by Book Gossiper, so definitely check her channel out because I've been loving her videos lately. She is so awesome, so you guys should all check her out. I'll have a link to her channel down below. And uh, the two-in-one book tag, uh, the two tags that are in this are the 10 influential book tag and then the booktuber habits tag. So first I'll start off with the influential book tag. And this was really hard for me. I mean, I literally sat here for about half an hour and just looked through my bookshelf and picked out books and put books back in. And I tried not to necessarily pick books that were just my favorite because I loved them, but I wanted to pick books that really had, like, influenced me and taught me things and, you know, shaped my taste in books and just, you know, my ideals and different things like that. And so I think I succeeded and I do have some honorable mentions because I cheated a little bit and I have like five honorable mentions but since I'm not explaining why these are influential to me because that's how the tag goes the original tag what you do is you just say the name of the book but you don't really explain why you just show the book if you want me to talk about why these are some of my most influential novels uh, please leave a comment down below because I'm actually thinking of doing a separate video where I explain each of my choices, but if not, you can just ask about a specific book in the comments and I'll explain anything you guys want to do. Just leave a comment down below and tell me what some of your top 10 influential books are. So let's get started with this. These are in no particular order. Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. The Mother Daughter Book Club series by Heather Vogel Frederick. The Hunger Games series by Suzanne Collins. Night by Ellie Wiesel. Animal Farm by George Orwell. The Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. And lastly, the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Riordan. So those are my top 10 influential books that I thought, I really thought hard about this. I might have missed a book or two. There are definitely a lot of influential books that I've read that really influenced me and mean a lot to me. Here are some of the honorable mentions, you know, that I definitely, they were so close to being chosen for this. So let's get started with those. There's about five or six. The Gallagher Girl series by Ali Carter. Allegiant by Veronica Roth, since it's the first book that made me cry. The Fifth of March by Anne Rinaldi. Mississippi Trial 1955 by Chris Crow. The 11, 12, 13, and 13 plus 1 series by Lauren Miracle. And the Nancy Drew series by Carolyn Keene. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Definitely tell me what your most influential books were down below. It really sparked an interesting conversation between me and my mother about this. So I really want to hear about yours and I just love this idea and it was so hard for me to pick just 10. I could be here for just hours talking to you about influential books. Okay, so the second part of this two-in-one tag is the booktuber habits tag and I've seen a lot of people doing this recently and it looks so much like so much fun so I'm really excited to do it. So let's get started. First question, how often do you check YouTube a day? Pretty often I'd say. I mean whenever I have time I'll watch a video and so I'll check my notifications and I also check my email a lot so I'll get notifications there you know if I have a new comment or a new subscriber. Two, what is your favorite type of book video to watch? Probably book hauls, wrap-ups, and TBRs. I love watching those. I also like tags, of course, but book hauls are fun because you get to see all these new books that the person got and you, know, you can say, oh, I have that, you're going to love it, or oh, I've been wanting to get that one too. And then wrap-ups are fun because they're like mini reviews in one video. And then TBRs are fun because, you know, you can see what someone else is reading. You're like, oh, maybe I should read that this month too, you know. That would be fun. I'm totally copying you now. Is there any structure to the types of video you try to film each month? So I always film a wrap up and a TBR video no matter what. I have done that I'm pretty sure every month except January I didn't have a TBR video but I explained that so it wasn't like I just didn't have time to film one. I did that on purpose. It didn't really work out very well but I did it on purpose. Um, so those are two videos I will always upload and then 
from then on, I just kind of try to go with the flow, whatever video ideas come to mind, if I'm tagged in anything, if I come up with an idea, if I want to do a review. Now I'm going to start doing Top 5 Wednesday videos every week, so I'll have a few of those every month, so those will become a regular thing. So that answers that question. Four, do you have any social media related to your channel? If so, which one do you check most frequently? Well, I have a good reason, and I check that way more often now, and it's so much fun to see what you guys are reading and what, like, the people I'm friends with on there are reading and then I also have a Twitter and I post links to my videos on there and I tweet people so you should follow me on both of those. I always leave my links down below if there's any social media you're like oh do you have it just ask me and I will tell you but yeah and then I have a Tumblr too. I mean not they're not specifically like with my channel you know what I mean like they don't have the same username that I use for my channel but I do post links to my videos and I talk about books on them so they count. Do you film edit and upload all your videos all at once? If not how do you go about your video making process? Well in the beginning of my YouTube channel I used to do that. I would film immediately edit and upload like that's what I used to do but then I started to pre-film videos, and so it's not really pre-filming like, oh, I'll film 10 videos and then upload. I usually film like three or four videos at once, and you can't tell because I changed my shirt and like redo my face and my hair and stuff. Hope So hopefully you can't really tell, but I will film a few videos in one take and then I'll start, I'll upload them throughout the week. I am behind on editing some videos right now. I always like to have a video that I can edit and upload just in case I don't have time to film. But that's what I used to do. I used to do it all in one take. And now I will either, I will occasionally just do everything in one take. Um, but it's not as frequent now. Um, I kind of like to edit it at night and then in the morning watch it, make sure it's nicely, fairly nicely edited and then upload it. So I think that answers that question. What is your favorite type of book video to film? And actually they're the same videos that I love to watch. Wrap ups, TBRs, and hauls. I love hauls because I'm always super excited about the books I get and they're just, it's just so fun to show you guys the books that I'm getting and I just love it. And then wrap ups are fun for me because if I'm unable to get out specific reviews for each book, I can still give you an overall synopsis and how I felt about the book without, you know, just never letting you know how I felt about it. And TBRs are so much fun because it's like planning out my reading month and I get excited for each book like, oh, I need to read this this month. So, I don't know, I guess I'd go with those three. Just the ones I like to watch are the ones I like to make. And I like to film reviews too, but I find myself to be quite scatterbrained, so it's very difficult for me to form cohesive thoughts on video. I really have to bullet point and make sure that I don't stray too much off topic, because if I just ramble, it would be so bad to edit. Um, next question, do you like and comment on all the booktube videos you watch or are you a lurker? Um, I have to admit, I used to be a lurker. Before I started making my own videos, I was pretty much a lurker. And then a couple months before I started making videos, I started to realize like how much just a comment and a like can mean to a YouTuber, just in general, not just booktubers, but I typically watch booktube. I mean I watch other channels too but booktube's my favorite. So yes I like every booktube video that I watch. I do because I appreciate it so much when people like my videos and comment. If you make videos you understand what I mean. It means so much when someone takes their time out of the day to comment to watch your video first of all and then comment you know something that they thought of while they watched your video and to like it and then you just see you're like wow these people care about what I'm talking about and you know they think I'm an okay person and they want to talk to me. So I don't know, it just, it means a lot to me when people comment and like, and I've started to realize that. So yes, I like every video I watch, and I comment if I have something to say, which I usually do. So I make sure to watch the video when I have time to, you know, really sit down and think, like, what do I want to say this to this person? Okay, next question. Do you try to review books as soon as you finish them on Good Reason YouTube, or do you wait a few days slash weeks? Um, I'm really bad about doing a written review. I will immediately rate it and 
I'm always thinking like what do I want to say in my review? I haven't really filmed any reviews lately because I have so many that I need to edit and upload from a few months ago that I just haven't had time but I'm planning on filming a few of them and one of them I read I think a week and a half ago and one of them I read two days ago so it really just depends on what my filming schedule is and how I'm feeling about filming. Usually it doesn't really matter that much because I will film it around when I read it so I will remember the novel. If I don't film it around then I just won't film a review of it and I'll just maybe like write a sentence or two on Goodreads about how I felt. Ask any random question you want here. I'm going to steal a question that I actually heard Rachel Taylor ask in a video a few weeks ago or a month ago or something. I'll leave a link to her channel down below because oh my goodness she's one of my favorite booktubers ever. Her videos are so funny and fun and engaging and informational and seriously one of my favorite booktubers ever. Like she's and she's so nice and funny. You guys need to subscribe to her if you're not already which I'm sure you are but if you aren't what have you been doing for your life? You need to subscribe to her. Anyways, so she asked her subscribers, what is your least favorite book of all time? And it's actually really interesting to hear this because despite the fact that you hated the book, it influenced you in some way. You kind of realize, like, I don't like this in a book. Or, you know, you learn to stay away from those types of books. I don't know. It just... I should do a whole discussion video on this. But yeah, I just find it incredibly interesting and I want to know. And the last question is answer the random question from the video you were tagged in or watched. Okay, and so the question that Allison asked, Allison aka Book Gossiper, is what is the, your most prized possession on your shelves? And at first I said my books because they are beautiful and gorgeous and fabulous and they make my shelves. But then, if I had to pick an object, it would probably be other than pic uh, pictures, obviously, is this. And it is a tiny replica of the Eiffel Tower. And it reminds me of when I was in Paris, and I just loved it there so much. And so I got it there, and it just it reminds me of that good week where I was there and it was just beautiful. So yes, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you Allison for tagging me. I had so much fun doing this and I love your videos so I was really excited when you tagged me. So I'm going to tag two people in this and I don't know if they've already done it. I hope not. I'm going to tag Beyond the Pages and Keisha Forsaken. I think I'm saying that correctly. I'm so sorry if I'm not. Um, if I'm not, please correct me. I I'm so sorry. If you guys have done this, just... I'm sorry for making this awkward. I love you guys. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. So now it's time for my random fact. My random fact for today is that I'm a very fast reader, in, like, in, just in my opinion. I can sit down a book and within like three hours, like a 360 page book around that, I can finish it in about three hours if I don't take breaks or get bored or put it down or something. So I am a pretty fast reader. I can read a book in one sitting. Yay! Sometimes it's not a very good thing though because you know you want to extend the world and not rush it and then all of a sudden it's over and you're like why do I read quickly? Stop. So people who read slowly, you know, you might think that it's bad because you can't finish books very quickly, but you absorb the world much better than I probably do. So yeah, that was my random fact. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!